Hey, what is going on guys? Paul here and welcome to today's video. In this video, we'll be visiting the Mercedes dealership to get this GLC fixed because unfortunately last week it did get a check engine light. So here I have the key for this GLC. It's a really nice looking key fob. Well, it does have kill a century, but let's unlock it this way. It's really cold in here. So let's just push the button right now. And you see the car started just fine, but the check engine light remained. And the car right now has only 11,735 kilometers on it. And if we go back here into the service, Assist Plus, we have already completed service A on this car. So it's not like we pass the one year every 20,000 kilometer service. We have already done that. Everything checked out great. Uh, but we do have the check engine light now. Now the worst part is you can't just lock the car while having the key in your pocket. Uh, you can't lock this. And if you think there's no car that will lock while the car is running, you're wrong. There are cars that will actually allow you to lock the doors while they are running as long as you have the key with you. But because now we cannot start the car with the app and we had to go inside to start it, I can't just lock the doors and leave the car alone because the car is unlocked right now and I, there's no way I can lock it. it. Looks like all the snow is melting off the windows. That's nice. Perfect. And yes, the GLC unfortunately did get a crack on its windshield. And by the way, guys, this is literally the worst trim piece your car can come with. Unfortunately, when we were buying the two GLCs at the same time, we didn't notice it had this trim piece. We thought it all had the wood because we said, you know, intelligent drive is a must and the wood trim is a must. But I guess when we it was delivery day, we weren't going to just not get the car over this trim piece uh, when everything else was exactly how we would like. But yeah, this trim piece, it's nice, but it's scratched up like crazy. Like, look at this. This is what happened in just one year. So now let's take this GLC in to get it all fixed and see what was wrong with it. So I did end up dropping off the car and I also let them know that there is another issue where when you're going over bumps, there's a clicky noise, like a squeaky noise coming from the rear, right? Like behind the passenger. So they're gonna be looking at that too. They did say there's no shuttle. I either have to like get a taxi or something like that to go elsewhere, uh, or it's gonna take a really long time. So I'll be waiting here. It's currently 10.53 uh, a.m. So let's see when I can pick up the car. And they also mentioned whatever squeaking that's happening and if it was caused by road debris or whatever, uh, there'll be like a $169 diagnosis fee that I have to agree to pay uh, for their diagnostics because uh, that won't be covered under warranty or something like that. So yeah, I mean, every time uh, you gotta agree to pay something, uh, but then you don't pay anything if it was covered under warranty. But in my opinion, when your car is under warranty, it should definitely not cost you any diagnosis fee. That's why you buy a brand new car so that anytime there's an issue, you know, they can take care of it. I mean, if you take a car that does not have like a bumper crack or like there's no any accident damage, they shouldn't be telling you that, you know, if it was caused by road debris, uh, we're gonna charge you a uh, $169 diagnosis fee. They should first look and figure out what was wrong with that. And if it was not caused by a defect, then they should charge you for the repair but they shouldn't charge you for a diagnosis when your car is under warranty. It's 1.41 p.m. right now, and I had the service advisor to talk to me about 41 minutes ago, and uh, they told me that there is in fact an issue with the car, and they do have the part here, but it's gonna take a couple hours to get it fixed. So I said I'll just wait, of course, and then uh, we will get that taken care of. For the sound, uh, I had to leave the car overnight, which I'm not going to do. So we will come for that uh, squeaky noise later. I also asked them to get me a quote for the cracked windshield. So we'll see how much that costs to get fixed. I'm just gonna go and get some lunch while they're still working on the car.
All right, guys, so it's 2.24 p.m. and I just had a phone call from the service advisor that the car is ready. So an accident just happened. I don't know if my phone got it though. So unfortunately it did not record it. So I can't really help them out. So hopefully they have a dash cam. So here I have the paperwork. So let's take a look at what was wrong with it. The pump in the diagnostic module of the evaporative emissions control system has a sporadic malfunction. Check power of pump in the fuel tank diagnostic module. Volume not within spec. We'll need to replace fuel tank diagnostic module unit, clear fault code, test drive vehicle, no check engine light, customer to monitor. So you can see we have a big fail on that. We have a quote on how much it will cost to get a new windshield. $1,322.97. With taxes and shop fee, we're looking at $1,464.31. That's a big ouch. But thankfully, all of our vehicles do have full coverage on the insurance, so you get full glass coverage. Uh, so with a small deductible, uh, we will be able to order a new windshield so we won't be ending up paying almost $1,500 to replace the windshield. And here is the total. So we ended up paying $0. So thankfully, this was all taken care of under warranty. So thank you so much for watching. If you are new to the channel, consider subscribing. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.